And the reason why we're doing this very raw, un, un, um, un, unfiltered opening is because due to DMCA and Twitch shutting down a lot of the music that's happening, even when we used royalty-free uh, music for our opening, Happy Hour from the Tower, they were knocking out the audio for the opening of the show, which meant I had to cobble together a, a quick intro for everybody, and I really didn't want to do that again. Uh, so for those of you who are new to the stream, how you doing? Uh, this is normally Gaming with the Team Monster, but we are now doing a, a podcast roundtable for Happy Hour from the Tower. If you are not familiar with Happy Hour from the Tower, you can get familiar with Happy Hour from the Tower here at this at the podcast at this podcast URL. And um, along with T, let me just go on ahead and just do a real casual uh, introduction of everybody. Guy above me, all the way from the UK, he is our special guest tonight. He is the Big Marvinsky. And then over to my uh, over to my right, hi, hey, how you doing there, Spence? Good to see you. Uh, over to my uh, upper left is uh, Nick Kelly. And Hello. So I'm in I'm in reverse. Yeah, you're in reverse. Uh, yeah, that's right. You yeah yeah. Usually you're on the other spot. And then right next. No, my to me, sign is. Oh no, you're oh. you know your sign is forward. At least on mine, I can read it. I can read it's it. It's mirrored for you. And you only. Sorry. <laughs> it's the little things, chat. It's the little things that fascinate me. <laughs> and then right next to me is Brandon Kelly, um, who has had a, who has had a heck of a day. <laughs> Real quick, did you guys happen to get the Cloud Strike for your mom? Did you make that happen, Brandon? Maybe we'll or... talk about that on stream. Oh, we can talk about that. We can we can talk about we can talk about that. That's perfectly fine. All right. Uh, so, uh, just wanted to go on ahead and just, uh, introduce everybody, get everybody, um, get everybody up to speed with us. Yeah, we're, we're getting there. I've, I've got, I've got all the sound effects ready to go for that. So thank you, Spence. We are ready for that. <laughs> and, um, as this is the part that's going to be edited out. Yeah, we're doing a re-record, uh, for a couple of reasons. One, during the re-record, Marv expressed uh, a little bit a little bit of disdain that he was not invited to episode sixty-nine, and I said, "Well, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna probably re-record it. So let's let's bring Marv back in because when I was listening to episode sixty-nine, I'm like, wow, we're kind of all over the ballpark.' And in the meantime, that while I was trying to get episode sixty-nine out in a, in a timely manner, Brandon and I ran uh, Deepstone Crypt, so I wanted a to go ahead. Time. Yeah, yeah, a couple of times, and it's one of the things that I want to talk about because um, not only did Brandon and I get our coats, but Marv up there, Marv actually went for Worlds first, which, I mean, I just think that's incredible because that's that that's such a that's a big deal, man. Whether you whether you complete it or not, you go for Worlds first. I, I just think that's a, that's a big deal. So first half of the show, we're going to talk about Beyond Light. We're going to talk about the, the what we think of Beyond Light and all the different stuff that comes with it. Second half of the show, we're going to focus on Deep Zone Crypt, and we're going to talk a little, and we're going to have uh, Nick do some driving, and I'm going to also ask these guys some questions as well. It is five o'clock, so we are going to go ahead and uh, kick this off. So everybody, thank you very much again for joining us. Episode sixty-nine of Happy Hour from the Tower in three, two. Greetings, warlocks, hunters, titans, and all the ships at sea. It's time for Happy Hour from the Tower, and I'm your host T. Morris. And over to my upper left. I'm Nick Kelly. And to my lower left... I'm Brandon Kelly. And all the way from the United Kingdom, guest sign on in. I'm the Big Marvinsky. Hello. Hey, everybody. Hi. It is great to be here for episode... 69, dudes! 69, dudes. <gasps> yep. Every, yep. You, you oh, knew, I you, thought you had a button. <laughs> I, no, I, I already dropped it in. I already dropped it in. We can sing yeah, along can the next time. The stream. Yeah, it's only in my I stream, see. but you can you can sing it along with me. So if you know, just to get it all out of our system, it is just to make sure everybody knows it is episode 69, 69 dudes. Whoa, that's right. So we are we are here to talk about. Now, <laughs> Brandon shakes his head. Stupid adults. <laughs> <laughs> So anyway, uh, we're here to talk about since since our last show, and the reason why we had a little bit of a gap, we're going to get to the to why we had a gap between our our usual biweekly schedule. Uh, we just dropped uh, Beyond Beyond Light. Beyond Light just dropped for uh, from Bungie, and we want to spend the first half of the show. We want to spend the first half of the show uh, talking about Beyond Light, what we think of it, our first impressions, and. Um, and we brought in Marv also because uh, because of of, uh, of Marv's background, not just with with Destiny, but also with raiding. Because in the second half of the show, we're going to go into the Deepstone Crypt. 
But let's first talk about Beyond Light, the long-awaited expansion of Beyond Light, which at this, <coughs> at the bless you, at this time of recording, we are now uh, we've not only kicked off Beyond Light, but we've also got the um, uh, season of the hunt and Wrathborn hunts. So let's let's start off with Marv. Marv, what are your impressions first of uh, the new content from Bungie? I think from Europa as a sandbox, Europa is gorgeous. Um, I don't think anyone questions that. <laughs> I think the snow, snow effects are really good, actually. It actually gives you a nice... What I found yesterday when I was doing a bit of farming for Christine armor, when the snowstorm picks up, you know, a high-value target's about to spawn in. So that's actually a really good visual <laughs> to, to let you know that's going to happen. Um, so that's kind of helpful. Um, I kind of wish, but I'll give Bungie a bit of a pass because... Um, obviously they're working within constraints of being locked down and not being in the studio together. Right. Um, I kind of wish they'd put a bit more attention onto core activities because that is one thing which I think is affecting the way the Wrathborn loop works. So when you, you know, you need to charge your lure, so you need to charge your lure by doing core activities. But if you're doing, if you're in the middle of the loop, and you've done your strikes for the week if you just go for pinnacle and you end up having an objective to do strikes again it's kind of like oh i have to come out of what i was doing to do that now but now then, when, when you talk about when you talk about the loop just to be just to just to clarify you mean the loop as in the order of doing things in order to get your pinnacles and your powerfuls and so on correct yeah just in general just just the way your sort of grind works but yeah because the wrathborn hunt should be there to help supplement that because a lot of the objectives on the wrathborn lure do sort of imply right? I need to do, you need know, you get speed and quicker progress from getting crucible kills, uh, killing prime evils in gambit, or running doing getting certain objectives and certain strikes. But you're having to sort of dip it out of current loop you're doing to keep the wrathborn charged, and there's no sort of way of saying, well, I want to have a crucible focused grind today, so I want to set my lure to be crucible focused. Right. And that, and that's kind of frustrating. I think, or some of the things I found, it's it's it kind of froze my rhythm off a bit. So what about you, Brandon? Um, compared to the other uh, down, uh, DLCs that we've got, downloadable content that we've got from from Bungie, where where do you put uh, where, where do you put Beyond Light? What how was your how was your uh, your ride throughout the uh, the story missions and every, all the other stuff that we've had since Season of the Hunts kicked off? I th I think Beyond Light is definitely up there for best of the expansions because of just how much content there was right away. Because uh, Beyond Lo or uh, Shadowkeep had a bunch of nightmare hunts, but it had three story missions. Forsaken had a great campaign and was is definitely probably top three, top two of uh, expansions. And then it's it's just like the way that it it has rolled out stuff and how there was a bunch of content to do, and then as soon as you ran out, the raid kicked off, and it, there was a ton more to do. Yeah, and I think that Bungie hit a stride with at least stuff to do on Europa and, and how crazy it is, especially considering the new light quest is super, super in depth and super good for new lights. Now you actually ran the new light quest. What, what are you, what are your impressions of it compared to what new light uh, players had before, uh, b beforehand? Well, beforehand there were, uh, what eight nine destinations something like that yeah something, something like that and you do the starter mission and it would just throw you out in the system <laughs> and not tell you anything right right now you have an actual quest line to follow that introduces most mechanics to you and I think the way that it is placed out is really smart on Bungie's part especially with the Cosmodrome being a starter area now and uh, and and your impressions of Europa? I mean, uh, I mean, I know Marv said that nobody can nobody can argue that it is perhaps one of the biggest and most beautiful things that um, uh, that Bungie has created. Do you feel the same way? Is it, is there anything is there anything that stands out for you as far as as far as favorite things concerning uh, concerning Europa? Uh, Europa as a whole is just <laughs> amazing. I think it's definitely one of the best patrol zones so far. It does get a little repetitive because the color scheme and the palette for everywhere is pretty similar. White. Until you get up to, like, the Fallen stuff. Uh, it's like then, our Republican Party. It's white. It's 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 just white within white within white. Sorry. that did that Was that my outside voice? I apologize. Continue, Brandon. 
Uh, I love the way that they're rolling out secrets and how like the penguins are are weekly, and the same goes for the augment mods. Right. Yep. Um, and I think that Europa has a bunch more to offer, and I think we're gonna see how it goes. And how about you, Nick? I wanted to get your impressions. Turning our turning our attention towards the uh, the the Rathborn hunts, how do you feel the the return of the crow and his his uh, his his um, uh, his ghost Glint, his real name is Paul Park. Um, how do you feel about that entire uh, plot that they that they cooked up about the crow and and of course spiders hold over the crow? What do you think of that? Uh, let me say this: If I was going to rate this as a DLC, I'd put it somewhere between Osiris and Shut Up, Marv. Um, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I love the. Hey, come on! I love the Shut Up, Marv at DLC. That was some phenomenal Shut times up, there. <laughs> well, the story was way too short, and it was yeah. way too profane. But you know, there we go. But you were. But we were. No, what uh, we were saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it. That is the exclamation point on. Hey everybody! Remember that complaint that we've had for years that there's all these different stories that that we never get resolution on. Ta-da! Like here's here's the guy you've been waiting to see. And oh, by the way, he's playing the character that he was hired to play seven plus years ago, right? Right. And and, um, and I think we've had this conversation separately, which was he is dependent now. Like if you go back to when you first met Aldrin Sov in D one. And, and I know Marv has opinions like he's he's a douchebag like you just hated the guy and it was and you know he was twitchy villain guy he's you know which was which worked great for an intro to that character and kind of lets you add some mystique to what you know what the Awoken were uh, I, I like it a lot I like that it's it's almost tongue in cheek to be like you just can't call him by his old name like shh, like it's not like there's there's like a dev to player joke there not just a, a yeah. in in game uh not to it too but but I would I will not go three sentences about this expansion and not say the lore is absolutely fantastic like that to me is, is far and away the, my my favorite thing about all of it what about you team so um I've I've said that Europa is what I wanted Titan to be and what I mean by that is um, I felt like Titan had such potential as a, as a destination and as a world. And after the, after the main, um, the main D2 storyline, we really never got back into the arcology until, uh, un until the odd quest here or there, or, um, uh, or even for, and then for, and then for Sabbath and song. And that was about it. And the thing that ticked me off was that, that that there was the, the architecture just just the 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 overall atmosphere of of the um of the uh of of, of titan and, and and its maps i felt like they that they just went unexplored and i wanted to go back there i wanted i wanted to go deeper in there and what i love about europa is that they do that we have been we have been constantly sent back to the the strike. We've been constantly sent back into exoscience. We have been constantly sent back to where the big giant head is unhappy. I mean, we we have we have been going back. And if anybody gets that reference, good on you. Um, but uh, but you know that that's what I absolutely adore about Europa is that we are constantly going back into these, and then we're going deeper into these maps. And um, and uh, new, uh, sorry, Beyond Light was everything I was waiting for. I, I did not feel disappointed in the delays. I'm glad we had the delays because if they wanted to, get, they, if they wanted to get it right, they not only got it right, they knocked it out of the park. Um, I haven't been happy with DLC like this since Rise of Iron, and um, and so yeah, I have been having an absolute blast with this DLC. Um, some and and then of course with the with the with the Wrathborn hunts, I've been enjoying the Wrathborn hunts. They they're they're like they're like uh, they're they're I guess I would call them mini strikes, but they're a lot of fun. You go in, bam bam bam, and then you're out, and you're like, oh that was fun. Let's let, let's grind for that again. Oh I've got to do some more stuff. That if if you now I would say with with Marv with Marv's um complaint, I feel like if you time it right if you if you look at what you need to do you can work in the the, the wrathborn hunts easily in you what you need to do so that you can have a charged up lure while going it but it is a matter of timing you have to remember to do what what the what the lore is telling you to do or what you need to do um i'm not saying it's seamless 
I mean, I sometimes free, I have to now get into my head. One of the habits that I'm trying to get into is when I get my usual, if I, if I'm like, for example, if I'm going to go ahead with you, with, with, with you guys, and we're going to go on a strike or we're, let's say we're going to do gambit. I'm like, okay, well, before we do gambit, I've got to go get gunsmith bounties and I got to go get, um, crow bounties because the crow bounties are good anywhere in the system. And I sometimes even forget I have them until it pops up. Hey, there's your there's your hand cannon one. Here's your here's your sniper one. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> Sidearm and, calibration. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, <laughs> my, one com- my one complaint about the crows bounties is that they don't drop recon data. It would be nice if they did. It would be nice if they did, especially after it would be we very helpful. Especially after after we go through the XP grind that we all need to get through to get to um, whatever level that we're at. Um, I'm right now, I, I feel like I'm sitting pretty at, in, in the 50s, and I'm just like, I feel like I should be higher. And then I see where Brandon is and where Marv is, and I'm like, yeah, I really wish I was hired. But, um, <laughs> but well, we I, streamline bounties as soon as the thing comes out. Exactly. So, and that's, and that's, that, that's, that's how, that's how you, that's how you get it done. That's how you get it done. Um, I, I wanted to focus a little bit on that loop that Marv was talking about. Marv, when you, when you talk about the loop on getting things done, how would you, Put all that together how, how what, what what it like let's let's say i'm new to destiny i'm trying to figure out the best and, and most efficient way to get what i need what the gear i need to get so that i will level up quickly what would be the order of what i do if you're new if you're like brand brand new and um, do whatever you want whether well, yeah. you like playing but i'm talking so about just do... so what it means if we were going to do what i did how i prepared for exactly day one raid yes okay so for day one raid, um, I just try to knock out as many, well, to get myself to level first just by playing the game, just sure. get through the campaign. Um, didn't, didn't, the good thing Bungie did was they didn't uh, make pinnacles available until you hit 1250. So it didn't, people didn't accidentally <clears throat> waste the pinnacle source, for example. Mm-hmm. So I just played through the campaign. I think I did just strikes endlessly i think after a bit of gambit interesting um maybe not actually no not gambit because gambit would have got dropped um you get like gear every time you rank up in gambit so i waited for gambit so once it was 1250 then knocked out pinna- uh, pinnacles and powerfuls um i think i did pinnacles when i was at a point where my gear started to plateau but otherwise it was powerfuls for plus ones here and there but pinnacles when i need that step up the mistake I made was I did the exotic quest too early. I should have sat on the exotic quest for a bit longer. And was that the was, they, that, was that for Salvation's Grip? Salvation's Grip and for I don't know it's not exotic, but the Pinnacle Adored. Um, mm. I picked it up far too quickly. Right. But it did give me a boost. But if I'd held on to it, it would have given me a much bigger boost. But because the um, the seat the ceiling or the level for the raid was twelve thirty, regardless, I'd already been I got to that point where I really quickly, and plus you had two weeks to get there. Which was a really good figure of Bungie, and I know um, there's been obviously things in the community that have been said about the Deep Stone Crypt on day one being too easy because of the completion rate. Right. Um, the, well, the volume of completions was still really high, probably the highest it's ever been, but the percentage of clears is low. Right. Like in the one uh, under two percent of teams. I want to go. I, I want to touch on, on that. One. I want to. I want to touch on that. Um... I want to touch on that in the second half of the show, but I did want to jump over to Brandon real quick and talk a little bit since you brought it up, Marv, about the exot about different quests. Some of these really neat little side quests that we've been going after: the Salvation's Grip, the the um, the, the 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 Lucent. Uh, I mean, what do you think of the and the Adored? What do you think? Was, did I get that right? The Lucent. The Lament. 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 I don't know why. You think it's a Lucent Blade. Lucent. I think I'm more. thinking a Lucent Blade. Okay. <laughs> Okay, the the lucent lament. Okay, let's just talk about the lament, the sword that goes. Brrr. Um, what how, what do you th- how, how do you feel about some of these quests we've been going on for the weapons, Brandon? I mean, did they how do they feel to you? Do they feel do they feel super hard, super easy, a nice mix in between? What what do you think? Um, I don't think any of them are super hard, and I think that's a good thing on Bungie's part. Uh, I think Salvation's Grip was decent as a quest line. And gave us one of the funniest actual quest <laughs> missions ever. <laughs> oh my god! Your ghost, so we're, good. We're, we're talking. So we're talking about. We're, I, I remember Marv warned me. He was like, "T, just shut up and listen and brace yourself because this is this is going to be this is going to hurt." And yeah. what he's talking about is the quest where uh, where your ghost 
basically does a gambit impersonation and drifter. and and oh, sorry yeah drifter impersonation and i don't know hey, I, i've had a long day everybody uh and and um and it apparently the the the, the behind the scenes story is that Apparently, Nolan North knocked out a drifter impersonation that was dead solid perfect, and then, um, and then uh, they had to go back and they said they said to him they said they said no you need to dial it back a bit you need you need to you need to make this not as good and so he you know like 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 you have sometimes where you have musicians that are like you need to pretend that you're a bad musician but these are really skilled musicians he had to do just that and it was probably one of the funniest thing, funniest missions ever ever put together what 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 have been what have, what have been your other impersonations i'm uh, sorry your impressions of these uh these these side quests um jagmeister jagmaster in um in in chat said that he feels they were too front loaded uh what do you think do you think that's true or not I don't know what that means. Um, uh, okay, wasn't sure. But overall, what do you think? What do you think? Uh... Um, I think I, I think they're definitely appealing more to a casual player base for the exotic quests, mm -hmm. which is yep. something that's been needed for sure. Um, yep. I think the lore behind Lament has been amazing. Uh, so just good. The satisfaction of picking up one of those exotics is really nice. I think the only <laughs> one that's kind of lacking is Salvation's Grip, just because it's it, it, the way stasis works in its own regard of how it's freeze and then shatter compared to every other grenade launcher which is just shoot and they die uh but other than that i think all the exotics have their own definite quirks because lament is the exotic falling guillotine and it is. cloud strike is the oh. dps machine i mean it's just <laughs> Crazy. I, had, I had a question actually. Do you feel that players easily miss the significance of the lament quest? It's very possible, some of them, I think. Yeah, yep. for sure. Because a lot of the people just play the game to to have that grind, <coughs> and not a lot care about the lore or or yeah, like pay attention to the which fact is that a shame. Because Brandon, I... you said it to me every time that the world's largest exo bobblehead doll opens his mouth, you hate him more. Yes. And, and yeah, and that's that to me. I'm like, you don't uh, like. I, I, there are people who who have come into this game later, who have missed out on stuff. I know, like they've really they've kind of pedaled back in uh, in the uh, the fear of missing out stuff. But you know, there are players who will never know the joy that is Shiro, right? But, or but, um, and and gentlemen, yeah, I mean, the, uh, but before like before that. you wind before you wind up our 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 uh, our resident chronicler. I did want to say thank you for the for for a fantastic segue because I wanted to turn over to Nick and ask him about the impression of the lore that has been dropping with this DLC, which I would argue is so, probably some of the best lore that Bungie has ever come up with. It it, it is in the in the uh, you know to quote Hamilton, wait for it. <laughs> the the storyline that we've been waiting for a long time, like the birth of the Exos, like how long ago did we? get the origins of the awoken and now it's years literally years have gone by and now we're finally getting that you know the reveal on, on that and which is a huge core storyline to what exos are the the how more tie-ins to the vex the bray family i mean it, there, there's a lot of little things that it touches but at the same time there are little beautiful lore entries this season that are just bite-sized, digestible, standalone, enjoyable things. The penguins have a whole thing where this kid is writing letters to the traveler, and it's it's so it's it's that little bright spot in Destiny, so that it doesn't always become the the, the horror movie that people like me want it to be. You know, you need to have the, <laughs> the you need to have the, the the contrast. There is a I mean you've got that, and then with um uh with one of the other pieces, there's a dark future lore book that is terrifying, terrifying. And then while all that's going down, you have Eris writing letters to a bunch of different NPCs. And, and so there's these different lore books that, that you're working on concurrently that are wonderful because it's not the Bray story is all, right? Like if I go right. back to like Warmind, like that was it. Like all you got was that was the whole story mm -hmm. as opposed to we're also taking you to all these places. Like you could have the Bray story they could have easily done a swing and a miss and just had everything be about Europa and about the Braves and not done anything with Aldrin. And it would have been a, it would have been a, a miss in, in terms of 
in terms of the ingredients that we have in front of us. The lore buffet this season is amazing. I, 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 yeah, I, I would, I would concur. I mean, it's just, it's a bit like Europa itself. It's, it is, um, it's been worth the wait. And, uh, and I mean, some of these, uh, like some of the lore that we picked up through the uh, through the the XO challenge, where we had to find all the all the deactivated XOs oh. across Europa. Oh my <laughs> god, that was that was probably I took I took uh, I took Steve Sailor and Spence on that quest, and um and it was like the min the minute the XO started talking, they were like shh okay, and I mean it was just it was just just terrific, just just top notch writing, and and I think yeah, there, it was so hmm. it, Brandon and I did them, and then just from an unfortunate. Uh, um, coincidence. The last one we got to was like the, the. Well, why does she get her own? Yeah. Her, you know, and it was like yeah. oh, all the ones to end on. You ended on like the superficial one, but nice little then, palate cleanser. We, it's a nice palate cleanser. Yeah. Then, then we went back and we're on Europa, and I hear Brandon say, "Mom, I don't mean to make you cry, but um, click on this guy." And I was like, "Oh, you're gonna start with that one?" Like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Now, um, now start with the superficial chick and work your way back. Don't, there you go. Don't start with the heaviest. And right? I, why do I remember what it's like to feel like to hold my son? I'm like, oh, oh, oh yeah, oh, no, oh, oh. And you know the the the. And, but but I and I got just as much feels off of the. Um, so there's a, uh, so there's a uh, um, there's a side there's a side quest slash um, triumph that you can do during the Deepstone Crypt where you have these tablets and the tablets are. Um, are, are basically the 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 stranger and and it's it it ends with a goodbye letter like she's she's turning herself off and i'm 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 listen i've listened to it already like 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 two or three times and i've been like i've been like is she, is this like a is this is this the exo stranger in our timeline or in a different timeline and and it's just it's all these in, incredible questions that i have about it and and it it is it's just absolutely beautiful touching gut wrenching terrifying it's it's a lot it's a lot of an emotional salad and we're going to we're going to do another deep di- we're going to be doing a deep dive into the deep stone crypt uh in the second half of the show guys thank you very much for your input on this everyone in chat thank you very much for your input we are going to be right back after this quick break we're going to talk more about the deep stone crypt and the uh adventures that Brandon Marv and I have been having right after this break and we're clear. Okay. Nice job, guys. Hey, Marv, have you read the, the Dark Future lore book? Or uh, any yeah, I think I, I think I've, I listened to you sort of think by some of it, and I, and I read three bits of it. That is some very grim stuff. It's, it's yeah, and I've gotten to the point where they, they find Zavala. That's as far as I've gotten yeah. to so four, four <laughs> book in. But there is there is a step in that process, and, and chat, I don't know how creative everybody is from an artwork perspective, digital perspective, anything along those lines. But if you get if you get in that lore book, and this is not a spoiler because it's a potential future, right. it's not something happening in the game. At one point, they put the Warmind in an EXO, and I want to see <laughs> that design so bad. God. So Man, bad. You know, there's, I, a, you, if, know, you know if, there's a fan out there who's working it, on it. If I can find it... Um... There's got to be. Is there one? That, have, is like, there a? There's got to be a fan. There's got to be a fan that's done that or something. That's, no, no. There's one that Bungie did a long time ago. Oh, really? Oh, oh that's right. Yeah, because yeah, it was original concept art, wasn't it? Yeah, I'll find it. So yeah, the original something that's so happening the, in the current in timeline. Is so the, that. <laughs> so the original concept for the Destiny One story. Oh, that was, was the one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Was in when when we went to the Dreadnought. We were going to rescue Rasputin from the Dreadnought. Interesting, and that's the and that's the concept of the Rasputin at the time. All of what was rumored to be yeah. Rasputin at the time. Beautiful piece of artwork right there. Yeah, yeah. No, that's something that's happened. If you go back and listen to the Osiris messages in Zavala's office, he mentions that he's trying to convince Anna to put uh, Rasputin in a dead EXO, and she's failing. And he says, "I know she has a great mind and all that stuff, and she could, she could do it. She just needs to have the, like, needs to not doubt herself." It's crazy. He's got a bunch of stuff. Like all of yeah. he has a bunch of messages in succession, and then it leads up to his last thing before ending up in the tower. Because you know, <clears throat> boom, <laughs> boom, big boom. So, chat. Just so you know, right now this is a uh, th- this is a quick little break that we're taking in between 
uh, recording segments, what I do is I basically take this, I take this stream, yank the audio from it, and then that becomes the, uh, that, that becomes the episode of Happy Hour from the Tower. Uh, we've been recording live for almost a year, oh, well over a year now, probably a year and a half. 110, and, 113 years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> in, in 2020 terms, yeah, 113 years. But um, <clears throat> this is the cash part. We're just going to take a quick, we're taking a quick break in case anybody needs any, uh, uh, anybody needs a bathroom break or wants to rehydrate or what have you. Um, I have a question that we didn't bring up last time we recorded then what we can do is we can uh, cover that uh, at the beginning because there was no, a couple- I, I don't want to co- I, I actually right. don't want to I don't want to cover it on the podcast I want to cover it informally and I'll make oh, you, it quick okay okay I just you you normally tell me say again can can the the fire team tell me why um, and I know the answer already and it's because people are stupid uh, <clears throat> the fact that uh Half the community lost their shit because Saint and Osiris are gay. I mean, it's 2020. <laughs> That's such a non-starter for me. I just, I, I'm, I, I know. I'm, I'm more confused about how it works physiologically with Saint being an XO. That's, so I, I went there. I, I went Not there. all relationships are sexual, <laughs> Marv. <laughs> <laughs> they could just maybe enjoy there's some one radiolarian company. fluid thing going on. I don't no, know, Marv. Oh, I can't oh. tell you. <laughs> Ouch! It burns. Well, if so, look, if I it, look, if somebody, if somebody, it, if my fluid is burning, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go see a doctor about that. I'm just gonna come out and just say it. But they're uh, not made of metal parts. Exactly. But I mean, um, no, I it it is such a. It, I, I can't believe that that people in like you said, it's 2020, and then, I mean, this is the future. Uh, it, it, it if, matter. as long as there's homophobic people, they're gonna raise their kids to be homophobic. So it's gonna tr- keep that's happening. That's true. That's true. Um, I would, I would look, look, so do we, do we instantly just bypass the fact that because they're not on camera, Devram's husband and Anna's girlfriend are like, they don't exist, but because both Saint and Osiris are in the game, that's why it's a problem. Like, kid, come on, don't be a fucking idiot. <laughs> so that's, that's it. Sorry. I'm done. <laughs> is it more because, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. Is, is it more because they're more tangible characters? I don't know. Yeah. That's or, fair, or, yeah, no. or, I mean, or, or could it, or, or could it be because that, that they're, in particular, Saint Fourteen. He is he is this big, legendary killing machine. He is the he is the essence of uh, of, of of the manliest of manly men. John Wayne would have loved to have been Saint Fourteen, and he's gay. John Wayne is gay. No, I didn't say John. <laughs> oh, <laughs> well, for for the purposes of everything now, John Wayne is now gay. There, well, there we go. And for now, and sake. and now it is canon. There you if go. It, if there it you go. makes anything clearer, uh, every historian will tell you that Saint and Osiris were good pals. There you are. Mm-hmm. And there, Rock Hudson's a good pull. That's Thank a good pull. Sales. That's a good pull as well. That's yeah, that's very, a good pull. He, everybody thought he was manly. Meanwhile, he's. <laughs> what about Carrie? Uh, what about Cary Grant? About the, um, if we talk about the lament, like lore again, I think a lot of people who play games hardcore and don't invest themselves in the story don't realize that Destiny isn't solely a video game; it's a universe, and people push past that just to try and get the new shiny. And I think a lot of people who just grind for for new things don't appreciate what's put in the game to create a world and make like because your guardian is supposed to be your own. It's not just supposed to be someone that you right just wake Master up Jesus. every once in a while. I would <laughs> argue this would be a pretty good this would be a pretty good co- topic for uh for 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 a future show, which is. Do you play Dest? Why do you play Destiny? Do you play Destiny for the story? Do we've, you play Destiny we've for done the that. Lore? That was like episode three. Really? Wow. Um, yeah. But no. We can revisit though because I think we can you know what? It, it yeah. wasn't until, it, it, like, it, until the split that that Bungie was started really referring to it more as an as an MMO, and all of a sudden you have all these you have all the story stuff that like it's the first yeah. release since they yeah. changed that that. Um, uh, you know, sort of descriptor of, of what destiny is if you come to this game because you want to play a first person shooter you're not going to watch my my name is by videos like we like we get it right. like not yeah, everybody right. comes to this thing you're going to come to it because the it's a sword that's a chainsaw but it but when you get that reveal of uh you know who i don't know if we're allowed to spoil it but you know at the end of the lament quest you're like he's been scatterbrained and absent-minded and right there for years 
and none of us like it, it makes you wonder like how many other characters have we just been taking for yeah. granted? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like all just of a sudden, one of the frames just, is going to come back and about sports, but just how badass is that story that said person and Elsie just kept on going and fighting Vex endlessly through constant wipes until they got yeah. it done and yeah. until they're able to close that gate. Yeah, I mean. And that and that's the thing is that it's like I mean this would be a great I mean, I, you're probably right Nick because that was like the third or fourth episode we are now at episode sixty nine dudes and and yeah I know it's a, it's an accomplishment but the thing is that a lot <laughs> has changed a lot has changed in yeah. uh, you know since then so why not revisit it and go do we want to talk about do we want to talk about why people play there's some people who just want to get to the end game. They do the raid, they conquer the raid, and then they move on. They move yeah, on to one another of the game. Points I had with the, the if you play Destiny solely for Crucible, then you shouldn't be playing Destiny. Talk. Ex- exactly, exactly. All right, let's. Um... So, Marv, I want. I want to. Oh. Last thing, Marv, I want to have this. I want. I, I want to write this conversation, <laughs> which is either either Elsie, or, um, or the the reveal guy, the new guy, as we will call mm-hmm. him. Uh, going into the annex and being like, oh. Eight oh one, how cute! Like just your first. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. On that note, um, and chat. One of the reasons why uh, we're keeping this tight is that um, I have I have a movie night tonight with the family. Uh, we're introducing we're introducing our daughter Sunny to Galaxy Quest. She has never seen Galaxy Quest. Oh, so that's super great. Yeah, yeah. So so we're gonna we're gonna go on ahead. They're minors. Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Enough. Um, yeah. Let's let's do something, or something's something bad's going to happen to Guy. Um, but yeah, we're going to introduce we're going to introduce her to uh, to um, uh, to Galaxy Quest. Brandon and I have both one. had a pretty long day, uh, but which is what we're going to talk about in the in the second half of the show. And so I promised Brandon we would keep it tight. Normally, when we do a uh, happy hour and we're we're all kind of rested and ready. We usually go two two and a half hours. We're keeping that. We're going to keep this tight and try to keep it as close to between one hour and an hour and a half as possible. So so that Brandon can chill out and that uh, my wife and I can get a pizza going and then movie night. So thanks everybody uh, for those of you who who watch. We usually do uh, happy hour from the tower recordings um, <clears throat> on Sundays around this time every two weeks. Feel free to uh, to follow us here. Make sure to uh, have notifications enabled so that when we do a re-record like this, you can always catch it. Just make sure the notifications are enabled. All right, everybody, here we I go. Believe part two of uh, I believe part two of the Last of Us airs tomorrow. Oh yeah, yeah. Just so you all know, and I'll I'll, I'll drop that because I actually had that pulled up. Um, just real quick, yeah. These guys also do. These guys being the Kellys, they do a family uh, a family geek podcast called the Geek Wolfpack Podcast. And, uh, mm-hmm. and, uh, there's a, um, we did a, a round table discussion. It was me, Brandon and, uh, Steve, the blind gamer sailor who actually did, um, uh, Steve, Steve sailor did on-site consulting for the last of us in the ways of, cons- of, uh, of, of, uh, accessibility. And we did, we, we were, and we recorded for what, two and a half hours solid. <laughs> it was just, two, yes, it is two hours without an exit. So yes, yeah. absolutely. And, uh, and we basically did a deep dive into what we thought, uh, what we, what we, what we liked, what we, uh, didn't like, but also, and how the game impacted us, uh, for the last of us part two. And it was a really fun discussion. <laughs> I, I was trying to cut them. I was trying to cut them so that they were equal length <laughs> and, and, and we got right, we got right to an hour and you guys were all talking about the ending. <laughs> and so the, the first episode goes like an hour and ten minutes, and then literally the second one starts with "Okay, exhale." Like, <laughs> <laughs> funny. All right. Yeah. So if you want to check that out, go ahead and uh, check that out right now. We're in the second half of uh, Happy Hour from the Tower, and uh, we will be talking about the Deepstone Crypt. So here we go. In three, two. And we are back with the second half of Happy Hour from the Tower. I'm T. I'm Nick. I'm Brandon. I'm Marvin. Hi. <laughs> Trust me. In the I think deep. He was, I think he was. He was. 
It, he was reading the uh, the seven paragraph entry over here in chat that that external just finally. Yeah, I know that was that was a huge dump right there. Uh, let's so let's go into let's tackle that before we get into. Uh, trust me, Marv's timing, Marv Marv's timing is way tighter in the Deepstone Crypt than that. So don't worry about it. But external memory just said I think the impact of LC dash one or LC dash two and Clovis one forty three slash Banshee forty four fighting too cl too close to the portal would have had more impact if you were too in close the portal. To close the portal, sorry, to close the portal would have more impact if you were in an instances zones of Europe, Europa, jeez, Europa with no, it's 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 the it, yeah, never mind, uh, with no Vex combatant presence slash the campaign missions were designed to have no Vex presence up until Aramis reopened the Volantis portal, but there's likely a lot of feasibility issues, technical limitations with something like that. Did any of you guys want to comment on that? Or do you think the impact uh, is still there from a the lower perspective? time travel, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I mean, I, I think external, I think you, you summed it up in the last part of that statement, which was you'd have to time gate spawn points if you're doing the development where, you know, to, to prove that it like until, I don't know, like it's it sounds like a pretty interesting new technical hurdle to try to introduce in the middle of, by the way, nobody's in the office. Yeah. Everyone, you know I mean? yeah, everyone's going to be at that step at a different point everywhere as, as well. So yeah, you're yeah, end up yeah. causing more too. problems. I mean, if I'm, I mean, amazed it, I'm, I'm half amazed that they can do it where it's it's the raid is over now. This new this new mechanic gets introduced in the game, right? We had the the, the dreaming city, and then all of a sudden it was the it was the the curse, and now this one again we the, the raid is over, and now you've got giant sarcastic bobblehead doll guy, and it. it opens up that whole other thing to you but it opens up to marv's point across the board it's a one or a zero it's not it's opened up for only the people who did the raid which that would be manage that spreadsheet and get back to me you know what i mean right 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 <laughs> um i did want to say the exo challenges which uh which which launched recently i'm really enjoying those um i think this i i nailed the previous one which was the which was ironically for me, ironically, was the jumping challenge one. And, I, you know, I soloed that piece of cake. This new one, I'm just like, okay, I'm struggling here. But I think I was still kind of high off of the fact that I finished the warlock, the quest for the warlock armor uh, from the Deepstone Crypt. And that segues us into talking about what just dropped... Um, only two weeks ago, it, it was it was the week of it was the week of the the last recording that we did, and I watched people do it. I watched, um, I watched people prep for it. I watched people do it, and then on the last day that we could have uh, gone for the uh, for the raid coats, Brandon and I went for it, and uh, and Marv was there as our guardian angel. Basically, it was. A <laughs> That, I just got to share this quick story. There was this thing, there was a situation, and big props. I want to, I want to say big props to not just the big Marvinsky, but also to Meatball Mafia Gaming and B. A. Chavez, who, um, who made the raids for us, the us being me and Brandon, happen this week. And I, I just got to say, there was a, there was this moment where we were stuck somewhere, and that guardian angel above us, Marv, basically said something in chat, and then Brandon relate it in a very sly way and everyone's like yeah that sounds like a great idea let's do that and marv responded yeah. with marv responded with let's see brandon is listening to me that's a good lad <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a it's a very simple thing as well i think what what the, I think the team was trying to do well i think there's a bit of confusion around how you get to the boss damage on the second encounter so you trigger the boss damage second by killing by killing the final servitor on the top floor, and then that triggers everything. So what they were trying to do well, was... I watched that for hours, Marv. <laughs> <laughs> I watched them stuck on that encounter for a long time. So they were trying to leave the servitor, one servitor alive downstairs and one upstairs, and then you get to a point where that's never going to work because there's a technical limitation within that um, mechanic where you can leave that downstairs server alive all you want, but then that scanner cannot be sent down the elevator back yep. down to the team down the bottom. And Brandon, as soon as I said what I said, Brandon picked up on it and worked it out without me prompting it. He's like, you put two and two together. He's like, yeah, that's why you kill the servitors downstairs. So that scanner <laughs> so terminal I, is free. Yeah, it's the downstairs learned... one of the blockers and then the upstairs one of the triggers. Yeah, right. Yeah. When, when, when you were racing through all of the rates to get the ring, 
right? The, oh. all the, you guys did all the raids, yeah. all the dungeons, and good and all times. That like there was there was very like that's when I first picked up on the thing you don't know about Brandon is Brandon speaks Morris. Like <laughs> there are six people, six people in this raid, and four of them are screaming the same thing at T over and over and over and over and over, and over again. And Brandon comes in very level headed, very even. I know, and, and I says I know the this. moment you're talking about. I know the moment you're talking about. <laughs> it was in the Crown of Sorrow. Everybody is just piling on me, and I'm taking it, and I just took a breath, and then Brandon comes in with like, T, I need you to shadow me, be here, drop a rift, and do this. You got it? And I just went, got it. Bam, did we nail it. We nailed it, Brandon. <laughs> and I just said, this is why this is my wingman. He is my wingman. It's because when you he have- He does it way more often. I think he does it way more often than you realize he does. Oh, no. I No, I, I, it's... ever since Crown of Sorrow, I know it now. I know it now. And, it and the thing- on every one of them. I yeah. promise. <laughs> I mean, and, I, know. And, and I I don't know if now, if I don't know if it happened on, 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 our, on our runs with, I know it happened on that first run with Deepstone Crypt, but this last one that we did with Marv today, I felt went smooth. It was- it was, it was a lot it, better. It was know. fun, but I mean, yeah, yeah. It, it. I and I think that's. A, and I want to. I want to talk about this just, just in general with 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 raves and I, I, with raids. And I want to talk about this with Marv. Do you think Marv that sometimes when people try to help that one guy in the raid, and you get like four or five voices piling on them, do you feel like that really works against helping in a raid? Should there just be one voice calling the shots? What do, what what are your thoughts about comms with raids? It's it depends on the per it depends on the person, but I would always say, even with an experienced team, one person needs to take lead, um, and defines what everyone's doing and what that strategy is. You can't when you go into a raid. If you say go in with like five experienced people, everyone would, if they're not played together for a while, everyone has a different strat in mind. Right. And if you don't clarify it, it gets confusing. Right. And people go off and start one strat. Other people start off another. And the two don't meet in the middle, and the whole thing goes to shit. Sorry. So no, you're good. I'll I'll bleep it out. <laughs> um, but what I'm quite convinced that I would be that guy, and that's why I like I've been so hesitant to even try any of them because I know if if like there are times where where you just kind of blow up because four people four people screaming at me and not being able to punch somebody is not a situation that I'd like to be in. Like I very much am like all right, that's fine. You, I you can. I send your entire bench after me, but the gloves are coming off, and we're just gonna fight. But, but that's why one of his favorite, like that's one of his favorite emotes is the one where that where, where 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 your your titan throws the gloves off and goes, "Come on, come on," you know. Yep. But Marv, what are your so so Marv? You were there from day one. You did worlds first. You went for worlds first. I wanted to know what were your what are your thoughts compared to some of the other raids that we that we've been that we faced as as uh, as guardians. What are your thoughts on the Deepstone Crypt? What do you think of it? As a raid itself, um, I'm going to get loads of flack for this. It is probably, in terms of execution for players, probably the easiest for a lot of people to complete. Okay. But it does require the most tight-knit communication possible. If you don't have that, the whole thing falls apart very right. quickly. Right. Um, yeah, because you can make mistakes you're... on the other ones, like Garden and, and Last Wish. But this one is, one, like especially that second encounter. If one person screws something up, the whole whole thing's a wipe. Yeah. See, I would I would compare that second encounter to um, the the final encounter of um, of guard of a uh, uh, crown of sorrow, because uh, going back to Marv's Mars point, it is reliant on comms. It is really reliant on comms, and um, I know that, that there has been some pushback. Uh, from the community, when when other people in the community, were, you know, some of the higher tier players were saying this was an easy one, this was an easy raid, and I'm 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 of the mindset it's like, well, if it was so easy, then why didn't you get worlds first? Because there was a lot of people making that push for worlds first. I know, I know, I know, I'm kind of straying into that territory, but at the same time, I'm like, what might what you what you perceive as easy may not be easy to somebody like me. I was the first time I ran scanner, I was terrified. I did not want to muck it up. I did not want to muck it up because I knew these teams were reliant on me that if I didn't get these comms right, if I didn't get the callouts right, then we were screwed. And uh, and then of course, as we as we saw today, there was you know left and marching band left, which I admit that's a problem. Uh, marching band right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know and and that there's there's uh, you know there there's that you got to make sure that those comms are airtight, and if if they're not if they're not with it 
then like Marv said, it's all going to fall apart. Now, Brandon, what about you? What, what, have been, what has been your experience with, with this raid compared to some of the other raids you've done? Uh, I definitely love this one the most, and I think it's probably just because, one, the lore, two, what this raid itself could mean for Destiny it's in a whole and mm -hmm. in terms of lore and gameplay and mechanics, um, and the fact that that one enemy is finally dead, hopefully. <laughs> um, and his head right. is in your tent. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I I love this raid. I think it's probably just because I've run it more often than most, or that it's just because it's it's one exos, and two, it's because we've run it so many times in right. just a week. Uh, but even like Eater of Worlds was cool, but it didn't have that same kind of flair, because that's the one I've completed the most. I think it was six right. or seven completions. Right. Um, and I just think that this one. I think that. Go ahead. If the if the argument is it's not as tough as the last one, then you're going to pigeonhole yourself. You're going to get we're going to get into the the lab thing again, and nobody's going to solve it in two days. And everybody's going to get pissed, and it's going right. to be too hard. So you have to have some that I that that. Uh, you know that that vary and and this one certainly based on the numbers and i'll give them to you uh day one there were twenty nine thousand and change clears for deep stone crypt U unique raid activity clears as opposed to so 20 almost almost 29 almost thirty thousand. same thing day one garden of salvation 551 clears last wish four so yeah, maybe you do have to course correct and make things a little easier to get more of the community engaged rather than just going, only four people did it on day one last time. Let's see if we can get it down to two. <laughs> like, that's not <laughs> all what the community wants. <laughs> I'm just going in the right direction with day one raids in terms of actually giving people a chance to level up and being able to participate. I think Last Wish had two days prep and God of Salvation was like one day prep. Right. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> So having more people being able to level, go in and experience it, you know, is really good. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, that's been something for nine to five players to, yeah. And that's been something that that that, um, that that Bungie has commented on, is that the whole reason they had uh, they had raid assists or raid help help or what what whatever they you want to call that, they did that because they realized that that early on and with Destiny, it's like eight percent of the entire population of Destiny had had ever completed a raid or even gone on a raid. And I was one of those 8%. And I was stunned. I was like, what do you mean only 8%? I thought it was a way bigger number than that. And um, and uh, what, one, one thing that I think that, that keeps me coming back to this raid uh, is not only... I mean, this is the first time... One of the reasons I was so giddy after the raid that Marv took us on was that I completed the Warlock armor set. And this is the first time, the first time I have ever completed a set of armor for a raid in one week and not only did i have that i had the i had the sparrow and the ghost and i'm just like i, I mean guided games thank you guided games that was what i was looking yeah. for uh jack meiser it's still in beta yeah and <laughs> but i was just i was just loopy over that and i i and that, I, and that speaks to the rewards right like if like yeah. as long as the rewards are good that you know people will people will give it a try and keep coming back you you unfortunately sound like you've missed out on holy crap this thing is way broken brandon um the eyes of tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> okay so let's talk about these two guys and how much how the how these two guys are probably some of the most hated people in destiny first off that guy <laughs> above us got eyes of tomorrow on day friggin one for him in the raid he first raid he went on bam it dropped second second, second all right second, second second raid this guy yesterday jumps in for only the boss battle just the boss battle. It took us three get... tries to finish the boss yeah. battle, and then I got the <laughs> friggin' exotic. And but but the thing that was funny about the, the, so we learned two things yesterday. That, that so we we assumed that it would go the same way it always goes, which is Stacia, who plays by far the least out of all of us, right, would do one empire hunt and get uh, the cloud strike. And so <laughs> the three of us, the wolf pack, you know, Stacia, Brandon, and me, went and and the very first one we did together, Brandon gets it. So. Now, while we're running, while we're running that that empire hunt, she goes, "Oh, there's like a yellow glowy orb on the ground." Like, like oh my god, so she still got an exotic either way. So, she is so, darling. She is, time, so darling. she is so darling. Every time we play, Doctor Kelly is so darling. But by, by, by the end of the day, each of us had picked up an exotic, and Brandon also had the cloud strike. So we had we got four yesterday, which was a, which was a great yeah, day. Right, because and that then, was tomorrow as well. 
And we learned, and the other thing we learned was, um, <laughs> if you want to clear a room, eyes of tomorrow, and then if you want to finish the boss after that's done, you will lament the dude. And it's <laughs> like that made it's that amazing. made the technocrat very very unhappy with us for a number of times yesterday <laughs> and today. Yeah, one one it's of the uh, if you do elected dif difficulty empire hunts and the host has already gotten cloud strike it's no longer in the reward pool ah interesting yeah, you know? interesting. good yeah. good point to it, know because it just says rewards enhancement course you can't get it again one of the things i will say real quick though about uh, going back to deepstone crypt that i um want to say that it has become my favorite raid period because one um every time i run it it just seems like it gets it gets goofier and goofier and we're just, I'm just having so much more fun. Uh, it's just, a, it's just a blast. Um, I love the mechanics of it. I, I, I pushed out, pushed the boat out on the second go around and said, you know what, instead of, instead of just clearing ads, I want to try one of these active roles. And so I tried scanner and I just felt like I locked in and I had a ball playing the scanner. So the mechanics of the raid really, they, they've been clicking with me and it feels, and I just, I'm now hungry to play this raid over and over again. But I give Bungie a lot of credit for this raid. It they gave one they gave us one, the most gorgeous map, with that spacewalk, and they coupled it yeah. with the prettiest freaking music that they have ever the composed. The Deepstone Lullaby is just. It's it, it it just makes it's it's like listening to the soundtrack of the West Wing. It makes me cry every time I hear it. It's a beautiful piece, and uh, and the fact that they were able to put this together while they have been quarantined is just a, it's a tremendous triumph for them. And I just love Deepstone Crypt as a, as a as a, as a, as a raid and as an event. It's just great. There's a part during the spacewalk as well where you kind of see Clovis's blind ignorance to the fact that. He's unleashed hell upon the world, and yes. he's kind of like, well, this is our salvation. And it's just like, it's it's just super. It's like, oh, we've been fighting these things that you've kind of just released into our. <laughs> I think that system. plays into the statue as well. Yeah, because if he's or, or, had yeah. that, then yeah. there's something up with his brain, more just, than just you know the hubris. Yeah, I, I call that it, I call that it. room the Event Horizon room. I, any minute now, I'm just waiting for I'm, I'm waiting for uh, for Sam Neil to come out of one of the dark corners, just you know, drenched in blood and speaking Latin. You know, I just it's really there. Was another statue was at the end of Garden. <laughs> <laughs> he says it at, when you talk to the head after that, where he basically says, "I yeah, I do it all again to to save the brain name," and you're like, yeah. oh, "Well, then we'll stop you this time." Like like. <laughs> the fact, Not the as long as we're around, yeah, that's the line. <laughs> the, the fact that go the ghost is willing to just talk back to him, I just I love it so much. <laughs> well, he's so, just a giant head now, so yeah. yeah we'll so so I would I, so I would put it to you, Nick. Um, and wait, or mm. in in the lore, wasn't it wasn't it Clovis that basically unleashed Siva, or created Siva to begin with? Or am I getting my am I getting my yeah. my my? Yeah, it was bra okay, yeah, it was the brace. So it is so it is truly mad scientist Clovis Bray. Okay, got it. Got it. So in closing, um, because we're because we're getting ready to wrap up. In closing, I just wanted to ask. Uh, we'll go we'll go around the circle. Marv, closing thoughts. Beyond light, Deepstone Crypt. Sum it up. I feel, for once, there's a raid that's very accessible to players, and people can easily get in and get the bug for the raid. It's. And for it, it's a nice change from you have a big bad and you have to just DPS it and you're done and you have to do loads of mindless mechanics the DPS phase. This all kind of makes sense. Each encounter is very varied and yeah, I'm all over it and I like it. How about That's you, Brandon? Uh, I agree with him. I think there's no reason for Bungie to make an activity that's going to have 2% of players ever try because it's so intimidating. Uh, I think the clearing... The, the clear rate for Deepstone shows that this is a really good, really accessible raid. And uh, I think Beyond Light as a whole is really what Destiny has needed for a while, minus the sunsetting weapons and some of the sandbox changes. Agreed. Uh, I... That everyone complains about because yeah. no one can be satisfied. Um, <laughs> I think Season of the Hunt has promise. I'm excited for Hawkmoon. Um, and I think... Uh, I'm excited to see what what the splintered title brings us, what the descendant titles bring us, what the warden titles bring us, what 
Europa brings us and what the Bray legacy brings us. How about you, Nick? What do you, uh, same question for you. Uh, so I recuse myself because I cannot be objective in a DLC that is all about Titans and all about <laughs> Exos and all about like, everything that I've been waiting for for like all this time. So um, yeah, I'm, I just, I mean, I love the, the reveal. I love that we've got different stories. I love that, that Clovis Bray supervillain is still out there, even though like, guess what? Like we're, we're, we're watching all this stuff happen. Savathun's still screwing with us every step of the way. So there's, there's more going on. And Zivora and, building an army. Yes, exactly. And, uh, and, 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 and I think I said it before, but Aramis to me by far, like I, one of my favorite villains that we've ever had. Um, and uh, there's just we, you know you get back first of all you get the you get the the buddy cop of stranger Eris and drifter or i guess Eris and drifter again right but then you get you get the stranger back you get you get crow you get the the the, the secret of the exos that we've been waiting for for all, for a long long time and it's i i think i've spent i don't even know how many if i put it all together at least a couple of hours just sitting here reading lore books and going through and being like oh Oh no, that's that's a terrible yeah. idea, you know. So, <laughs> and there's, yeah. there's, it's not even just the lore books. Like every seasonal weapon has lore. All the seasonal armor, even just the quotes, revealed so much. Yeah, it's crazy <laughs> yeah. to read through. Uh, for, for my own, for my own self, um, I yeah. just want to say that uh, in closing, I think the raid armor. Now that I've got the whole set and I can look at it, it is truly one of my most favorite sets since. Um, since since the prophecy read the dungeon, entries, read the oh, I am. Well. Oh, believe me. Not only am I going to read that, I I really think it's going to be a flip of the coin as to what first uh, raid book I'm going to read for uh, for the next fireside lore. Pip and I are up for a fireside lore. Um, I am willing to take ideas or suggest sorry suggestions on which lore book Pip and I will read by the fire pit for fireside lore because we we owe a fireside lore to chat. I I. Uh, there's so much good lore to choose from. And that's something I would say too about uh, Beyond Light is um, I feel like that that the, the writing is really locking in. And from a from a science fiction fantasy author's point perspective, that makes playing this game even more um, more addictive. Uh, I I absolutely have adored running with Marv and, and everyone else with the Deep Stone Crypt. It's just a fun time. I, I can't remember the last time. I mean as much as I as much as I enjoy raids, I mean, I felt like I was really tested. My my patience was really tested in Crown of Sorrow, but this one is everything I love about raids just ramped up to eleven, and it has yeah. been an absolute. There's there's mechanics that are just complicated to be complicated, and then right. mechanics that are complicated but fun. Yeah, because the, the once we finished the raid the first day, I literally went back in my head and was just like, okay, how does every encounter work yeah exactly and ran through it and <laughs> exactly I was just like i need to know this yeah and, and and that's that's the that's that's the best way to describe in my opinion the entirety of beyond light and the deep stone crypt mysteries i need to know this and i and i, I i've never i can honestly say i've never felt this strongly about that in destiny just that i need to know this and and it has been an absolute delight and I just want to thank uh, Marv. I want to thank you for joining. Oh, did you have, you have something to add to that? Go for it. Yeah, I was going to say one thing. I would much rather have, on a terms, if we're going to go for raids that are mechanical, I would much rather go towards the Deepstone Crypt route than yes. the Spire of Stars route. Spire Please! Of Stars mechanically, it was awful. God! <laughs> and, bu and buggy. You're, um, you're, looking yeah. at, you're, you're looking at the guy that got me and Brandon <laughs> and Sonny and a lot of other people through that Spire of Stars. It's just, and he just went, I mean, F it, I'm I coming in. Spire. I did not care for I, Spire. I, 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 I did enjoy Spire, but yeah, I just think after when you're trying to teach people oh, and you go, why did we wipe? It's like, well, because the bomb didn't arm itself properly because <laughs> yeah, the game. That's fair. That's it, what happened on our first night with Atrax was the right. fact that we had like four separate wipes because of a random glitch. But I did want to say again, uh, thank you, Marv, for joining us on such short notice to come on in and talk about it. Uh, Marv, did you want to tell anybody where they can find you or how they want to, uh, if they want to run the raid, what you know, what do they have to do? Um, find me on Switch. Um, go to my panels. Go to Discord, and then you'll be finding fire teams and stuff there. And that's Twitch.tv forward slash the Big Marvinsky. So there you Should go. Should be able to cover all platforms bar Stadia. Yep. Yep. Um, 
so again, chat, thank you. And thank you all, chat, for joining us. I, I, I was keeping an eye on chat. To, uh, I tried to keep up, but you guys, you guys got going, and I and I appreciate each and every one of you guys being in here and contributing to the um uh, to the conversation. I certainly do appreciate it. If you want to be part of this, uh, li- for those of you listening via the podcast on Spotify or elsewhere, you can join the podcast live at twitch.tv forward slash the T Monster. And you just go ahead and give us a follow and make sure notifications are enabled. And then you will be able to know when we're coming in to record. You can also reach out to us at podcast at happyhourfromthetower.com. You can go ahead and drop us a comment there, or you can just drop a little MP3 and we'll drop it into voicemail. And we'd love to hear from you. If you want to drop us voicemail proper, you can call our voicemail line at 703-791-1701. That also works with WhatsApp. So you can go ahead and drop something into WhatsApp, including a text message or uh, um, an MP3, and we will gladly play it on the show. And finally, you can go on ahead and drop comments for each individual show. If you've got something to say, if you've got some thoughts, if you want to go on ahead and um, and give us something that we want to talk about in the future, that's happyhourfromthetower.com. And thank you, everybody, for watching, and thank you for listening. Remember, folks, Happy Hour from the Tower is protected by a non-commercial, no derivative, share like United States 3.0 license. You can find out more about that license at creativecommons.org. On behalf of Nick, on behalf of Brandon, and on behalf of the Big Marvinsky, eyes up, Guardian, time to give up the ghost. The first rounds on Marv. That's fine. <laughs> and we're clear. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect, everybody. Whew, I, you know those weird pauses I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna take out, but man, I am tired. <laughs> Brandon, I I'm pre- tired as well. That's why I was like, my brain was unfunctioning. Yeah, uh, I was. It was still. It was a really. It was a real tight show. It was a good show. And uh, chat. Thank you again so much, chat, for 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 getting into it. I could just. I saw. I saw external and uh, Jack Master going back and forth, and I'm just like, okay, I'm gonna let them do their own podcast. But I I, I appreciate everything you guys were throwing in there. Really, I do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Um, I, for, I forgot. I forgot. Clavis bumped off with a break. I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> I was getting my, reminded from external memory. That. But uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up early because uh, we 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 all got stuff to do, and we all just gotta. Take a breath because let me tell you something. It was a, it's, it's a, it's been a heck of a day. Um, thanks again, Mar, for joining us. We really do appreciate it. Um, okay. All right, everybody. You all have a good night. We are signing off. <laughs>